Hey, what's going on? It's Pika over here in Singapore. It is Tuesday night. And it's not Tuesday night, is it? <laughs> it's Monday night. My God, I really don't know what day it is most days. It's really terrible. Monday night, n- December 11th. And I had the day off. It was marvelous. Except for the rain. The rain was a little ridiculous. Um, so, as always, woke up super early. Um, got baby girl off to school, did my Periscope episode, and, um, and then ran my errand. So basically I ran all over Singapore, or at least the center of it. <laughs> um, I started off in Amokyo and ran all the way down to Bras Basa. From Bras Basa, I walked to Dobigot. From Dobigot, I went to Little India. From Little India, I ended up back at Serangoon and then back to Haogang where I live. So it was a little bit of a traveling day. Once I got back home, actually, I ended up having to go to baby girl's primary school for next year to go get her books and her uniforms and all that stuff sorted out. And, um, yeah, that's coming a little bit more real now. And the next hurdle for us to jump through or the hoop for us to jump through next is to make sure we get up early enough to get her to school And basically start training her so that she can get there. Um, Like we'll push it a little bit each week so that she eventually can get up at... She'd probably have to get up at like 6, 6, 15 because it takes her a while to get out of bed. (laughs) And then um, it's really easy from there. So then I just have to, you know, wash her up, give her breakfast and walk her down to the school. So yeah, it should be quite interesting to say the least. (laughs) Um, I was able to get her to bed on time. I did, um, we got to have dinner together, we got to read a book together, and, um, yeah, got her to bed on time, and now it's just a matter of making sure she wakes up on time. Even though I did put her in bed at 8.30, we didn't go to bed, she didn't, like, try and close her eyes until 9. She has an issue where she wants to just keep her eyes open and look at the ceiling and play with the bed sheets and just, you know, entertain herself, which, then she's not asleep, right? So, yeah, it's a little bit harder for me to get her to bed, but I think I've found a solution. There is one soundtrack or it's a a score Uh, I don't even know if you can call it a score it's like an instrumental CD and it's something I used when I was young and it's something I use on her stepsister and it's worked so far and tonight it actually worked to put her to sleep I think it is The Sounds of the Grand Canyon it's actually available on Spotify and um, there are two volumes of it I used the first volume because it's the one we bought after we went to the Grand Canyon and took a tour and all that stuff like 110 years ago. So, Sounds of the Grand Canyon, uh, Volume 1. I think you'd enjoy it too. It's um, it's instrumental. It's got some, you know, nature sounds in the background and stuff. I think one of the tracks has like a thunderstorm in the background. I don't know what it is. Water sounds calm me down. Maybe it's because I'm Pisces. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But I love water sounds. I'm a beach girl. It the, the sounds of the ocean, sounds of rain, sounds of thunderstorms, they actually really, really calm me down. So um, I tried it on her. It did help her out. She fell asleep. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, I have kind of a routine set for her to go to bed every night. Um, I just need to figure out what music to use to wake her up in the morning. That's going to be the hard part. So we'll see how that goes. Um, meanwhile, back at the ranch, um, when I was at home today... I did do some laundry and um, hung everything out to dry. It was a beautiful day. It was so hot outside and sunny. There was a little bit of a breeze because it rained really heavily yesterday. Um, It was just gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um, For any of you following me on Instagram, uh, my Instagram name is Rasat1, R-A-S-A-T-H-1. And uh, my stories has actually pictures of the trees that I encountered on my walk around the city today. So I have a slight obsession with trees and especially the ones in Singapore because the bark is very, very dark. It's almost black. And then of course there's that beautiful green foliage and the way the trees grow, they're like the most perfect trees for climbing. Um, if I was allowed and wouldn't get arrested. So, um, it's, it's just, it's so pretty and I, I'm just always fascinated by them. If I'm on a bus or even a taxi or whatever, I'm always drawn to the way the trees um, line the roads, um, the kind of shade it gives, the way the branches reach out. They're just, it's just beautiful. I wish you could see it. So if you get a chance, yeah, do check out my stories on Instagram. Um, 
so yeah, like I was saying, I did, um, I did some laundry and because it was so warm outside, I figured, all right, well, you know, do laundry real quick. It's in the middle of the afternoon. I figure I'll hang it out to dry. It'll be dry in like no time. But guess what happened? As I would have it, um, hideous downpour and it didn't take even like three minutes to escalate. So I didn't have enough of a, a reaction to run and get the clothes in before a couple of the, um, a couple of lines got like soaking wet. So I live in a high rise building. Um, it's called an HDB. Um, and honestly, I don't think I know what that stands for. Anyway, uh, I live on the 14th floor and the way it works in Singapore is, I mean, honestly, you would have a line outside in your backyard to hang clothes out to dry, right? Or you'd have a dryer. Well, we don't do that. We have a line to hang clothes out, but they are bamboo poles that, um, basically hang between, um, one side, well, two sides of your, of your house, basically. So you can pull the uh, bamboo poles in, put your clothes on it and put it back out. So you kind of have to be careful. You kind of make sure, you know, you, you don't lean out too far. There have been deaths where people do fall out of windows and stuff. So it's just one of those things you have to be really, really careful. Um, so yeah, so I hope they get that gives you a little bit of, um, a visual of how we hang our clothes out to dry here in Singapore. Um, but like I said, I didn't have enough of a, a reaction time to run and get the clothes, like save all of them, obviously. So two poles, um, full of clothes got completely drenched. So I just kind of let them out there to hang because there was no sense to pull them back in. I mean, there was no point in rewashing them or spinning them out or anything because they were just so sopping wet. So I figured I'd just let them be overnight and I will rewash them in the morning because I do have more clothes to wash. So I figure I'd do that and see how that goes. Um, yeah, I was a little disappointed. I've never, I've never lost clothes to the rain before. I've always been able to get them in just in the nick of time. But it's all good. I mean, it's a learning curve. Um, so yeah, that was that drama. And it was raining so heavily. I actually had planned to leave early and pick baby girl up early so we could go grocery shopping and then come back home and make dinner. But it was raining so heavily that it becomes, um, for me, it's a little dangerous. I tend to slip a lot in the rain. I don't know what it is. I think it's my slippers. But I decided not to venture out while it was pouring down so heavily. I, I decided to wait it out and see if it was going to get, you know, any lighter. And it did. And that was about 6 o'clock or so. Um, so by the time I got on the bus and got to her school, it was about 6.30, which is about the normal time I pick her up when I, you know, when I leave from work. So... It wasn't a big deal, but for me, I was kind of hoping I'd get to pick her up early, spend some time with her, and then, like, put her to sleep early. It's all good, though. So, um, yeah, tonight I want to talk to you about technology, mostly because I've been having a little bit of a glitch with my, my computer lately, and I was chalking it up to Mer Mercury Retrograde. Yeah, it plays a part, I think. I mean, I don't know. I tend to blame it on the, the stars sometimes, too. Um... But yeah, you all know, right? Don't buy electronics, don't buy anything with moving parts when it's Mercury retrograde. And right now, the retrograde is set to last until 22nd of December. So for those of you that don't have a choice but to go out and buy, you know, electronics for Christmas, well, good luck to you. Be very careful. Make sure you keep your gift, or gift receipts and all that jazz. Um, okay, but for me, what I want to talk to you about technology doesn't really have to do with the retrograde, I don't think. I think it's the fact that, you know, we tend to collect and collect and collect files, pictures, videos, blah, 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 all kinds of stuff. We download tons of stuff to our computers, but we never really sit down to clear out things that are, are no longer necessary. And um, because uh, yesterday when I was at work, I, I told you, right, I restarted my computer almost 13 times. Because it would start up, it would get to like maybe five minutes in as things are loading and then it would get stuck. Like I can't move my mouse, I can't do anything. And it was just frustrating because I had work to do and my boss was like, oh, where are the files, where are the files? And I'm like, uh, uh, excuse me, <laughs> uh, let me see if my computer will reboot again. So as frustrating as that was, I decided to try again at home. And what I decided to do was, instead of opening up all my files or, you know, being quick to open up a browser, you know how we are, right? Instant gratification, we open as much as we can right away so we can, like, start multitasking right away. Um, so what I did instead was I went ahead and opened my programs to manage my programs. I recently downloaded um, Adobe's Creative Cloud because I want to start dabbling with Photoshop. I've actually never worked with it before. So I wanted to start dabbling with Photoshop, and I thought it'd be great, you know, to be able to... Um, learn some of those things so I could edit my own pictures and then eventually, you know, like, 
produce my own videos and stuff for YouTube. Unfortunately, I think all the trouble started when I downloaded this one piece of software. And as I, I decided to uninstall it, mostly because I think it was just taking up too much space and it was slowing down everything on my computer. Yes, I still have tons and tons of files I don't need on there. I should probably clean those off. And I will. Um, but I figured, let me just, I mean, let me do what I can to be able to make my computer more efficient and actually get to a place where I can actually use the computer as in like have a browser open as well as like a Word or Excel document without it freezing up on me. So lo and behold, when I undid some of these, you know, programs, I got rid of BitTorrent, I got rid of um, the Creative Cloud because I really don't use it that much. Eventually I will, but let me like clear my files first, right? So um, got rid of those things and suddenly it's working again. So yay! Um, I was able to uh, download all of my other podcasts from Facebook Live and um, will be in the process of uploading them to SoundCloud and then um, YouTube as well, so stay tuned for all of that. So what I felt was the the lesson that I gleaned from all of this, right, is that, yes, I do need technology. It is necessary to stay ahead of the game. It is necessary to keep up with everybody else in the rest of the world. Um, and as much as my phone can do, my computer can do more. And I need to make sure that it's taken care of. Like it's like in good health, basically. What I also realized was there are a lot of us who will make excuses when the computer stops. Um, and mostly because we don't have the money to just go right out and buy another one or go right out and fix it right away. We kind of need to troubleshoot because we, we don't have that kind of cash laying around. A lot of us. Some of us do. Some of us are a little bit smarter about saving money. I'm not that good. I'm working on it. Um, but what it what occurred to me was we tend to forget that there is an analog version of all of these things. Um, for those of us who write, you still have pen and paper. You have no excuse. For those of us who um, want to you know, create Instagram posts... Part of it starts off with a quote or some kind of idea. So to, to download by reading um, new information into your head so you can, you know, start pondering what you want to post next or whatever, that's still available to you. You can't say that, you know, oh, I can't run my business. You can. You can't post possibly unless you're doing everything from your phone. But um, you still have that capability. So as much as technology brings us all together, as much as we like feel crippled when our technology doesn't work the way we want it to, there are still other ways. I want to remind you, there are still other ways. If there is a will, there is a way. And for me, I know that um, I love pen and paper. I love the feel of paper when it comes to books and stuff like that. Um, so I would gladly go back to the analog method of doing things. It may take a little bit longer because I can't write as fast as I can think. I can type a little bit faster than I can write. Um, but eventually, I'm still doing the work. I'm still putting things down on paper. I'm still, you know, um, creating content and uh, thinking about my business and then downloading whatever information I can from whatever book I'm reading because I'm trying to push myself forward. So please, please, please don't ever think that you're crippled when technology is not being friendly when you're having you know those one of those days where just it's just not working right don't forget that you do still have pen and paper don't forget that you still can talk to people and get information and insight you can read and get information and insight um yeah there's no excuse because everybody who came before us did it the analog way there's really no excuse I mean look at how much they accomplished without being able to share something and let it go viral without being able to hashtag something and have people search for hashtags and discover you. They did it the old-fashioned way, and it still worked. Um, it may not work as efficiently in today's economy, but it will still work. You still have that ability to create without having to depend on your technology so much. So please don't get lost in this Mercury retrograde. I know it's not fun. I don't particularly enjoy it. I tend to get a little more, <laughs> a, a little more worrisome, a little more um, anxious about things. But it's important to me. I feel like I need to remind you guys, analog is still fine. I mean, why not accumulate quotes and blog pieces and whatever else, whatever, whatever other ideas you may have because eventually the computer will start working again or you will find a solution towards whatever isn't working well. And at that point, you're going to need the content. So in the meantime, why not, right? 
anyway, that's my two cents for tonight. Um, please, if you don't mind, like, share, comment, reach out to me, please. I would love to talk to you more about, you know, any one of these concepts. This is all based on my own life experience. I'm not making this shit up. I'm not, I didn't read it in a book and then decide to come talk about, uh, talk about it. This is something that happened to me today. It occurred to me that this is something other people possibly go through. And I just wanted to bring, you know, attention to it by talking about it in tonight's podcast. So thank you so much again for your time to listen to me. And um, hopefully I'll catch you again tomorrow. All right. Y'all take care. Bye.